Good day fellow investors, my name is Sven Karlin and I'm a value investor. I have a YouTube channel on value investing called Modern Value Investing and it has 185,000 subscribers. I'm also a book author, the book is called Modern Value Investing and the core of what I do is stock market research. I analyze businesses from a value investing perspective and I share my value investing analysis and follow those businesses on my stock market research platform. As a value investor, I'm always happy to make some content for value investors out there. And in this video, I'll go through the key value investing concepts. I'll discuss how value investing works, why it works, the key principles, and I'll clear out the noise when it comes to stock market investing that might be overwhelming you and really focus on what we can do as retail investors. And at the end of this two-part webinar, you should see whether you are in the 5% of the global population that is a value investor. The first part of the webinar will be explaining what value investing is and how to apply for long-term wealth accumulation. And then we'll really go into how to do value investing, determining risk, the intrinsic value of a company, hyperbolic discounting, how to make a valuation. And at the end of the two-part webinar, you should be able to see whether value investing is for you or not. So let's immediately start what value investing is. The key of value investing is Benjamin Graham and his book, probably the best sold book on investing out there ever, The Intelligent Investor. But Benjamin Graham was the first value investor and he simply bought businesses that were cheap from a value perspective. Let's say if you had a building that was worth 1 million and the stock market, the price of the stock representing that building was half a billion, half a million, then the difference would represent value and Benjamin Graham would buy 100 of such businesses, be it buildings, be it inventory, be it whatever. That was the first step in value investing, buying undervalued assets. Of course, value investing has evolved since then. Warren Buffett also started as a Benjamin Graham follower buying undervalued businesses. But since then he has evolved and he has been since the 70s buying American Express, for example, looking at the cash a business will give you between now and Judgment Day. Discount it, that's something we'll talk about in part two of the webinar, and get the intrinsic value of a business. Compare it to the stock price, and if undervalued, then it is a buy. Hello, Mr. Buffett. I got two short questions. One is how do you find intrinsic value in a company? Well, intrinsic value is what is the number that if you were all knowing about the future and could predict all the cash that a, a business would give you between now and Judgment Day, discounted at the proper discount rate, that number is what the intrinsic value of a business is. For that, of course, you must know the future of a business, estimate it, and we'll also discuss that how value investors, investors approach that. And the key is value investing is first and foremost about risk, a margin of safety, and then everything else is upside. Speaking of that, let's switch to the key investment principles of value investing. In this webinar, I'll discuss three of those focused on risks, it's about absolute investing, not relative investing, and value investors have a long-term focus, likely the longest term focus in the stock market. What does it mean to focus on risk first? So if you do something, if you first look at the downside, what can go wrong, then if you find such investments, such exposures where Whatever happens, even the worst case scenario, you're okay with that. That's managing risk first. And if you find investments that you are happy owning, even in the worst case scenario, then everything else other is upside. And that's what investors, value investors do. They first look at the risk. What can go wrong? What could go wrong? Because if you avoid things that can go wrong, then 
upside is everything that's left and you don't fall into all those traps that many investors fall into. For example, in the 2000s, the internet was supposed to change the world. It did change the world, but for investors to find returns, they first had to survive dips of 76%, 70%, and then things started going up, up, and up, even if it's unlikely that this will be sustained because of too much risk. And there are two risks when it comes to investing. We have extremely low interest rates that push the value of all assets up. That is the current economic environment with interest rates at zero. Everything that promises something higher is highly valued. And that's why we see stocks just going up, up, and up. But of course, this environment of zero interest rates if we have inflation, if we have other issues, might change in the next year, five years, 10 years. Nobody knows. But as a value investor, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, this can change, which makes the NASDAQ, let's say, too risky for me. I prefer things that no matter what happens in the next 10 years, will do okay. And for that, you look at specific company risks and rewards, the valuation, the growth, the debt, the competition, the regulation, and that creates a value investment. You're not betting on what the market will do. You are investing and owning a business. And as said, if you estimate the worst case scenario, let's say higher interest rates, let's say a bad decade for the market, and you still like to own that specific business, that is value investing. Because you buy something with a margin of safety that gives you a good return no matter what happens. So let's say worst case scenario in 10 years, you just double your money with the dividends. Best case scenario, you make five times, six times, 10 times your money. That is managing risk from a margin of safety perspective. And you avoid all those investments where you can lose 95% of your capital because deemed too risky. The next also concept is absolute not relative investing. Everyone is looking at stocks that will go up and compares one stock to another and says something is overvalued or undervalued. The price target of this stock is higher or lower. That's not value investing. Value investing is about absolute returns coming from a business. Value investing is about your returns, not what the stock market will do. For example, if we look at a stock of the German stock market, Deutsche Börse, we can see that the price earnings ratio is 25. 100 divided by 25, which means that this company is giving an earnings yield of 4%. Half of that is paid out as a dividend and the dividend yield is 2% plus the returns you might expect will be the growth coming from this business. A few percentage points per year in line with the growth of the German economy or European economy. And this stock, if you compare with other German stocks, might be cheaper or more expensive. I recently made an analysis of 20 European stocks and Deutsche Börse relatively is, let's say, on the cheaper side of your European businesses to own. So we could say it is undervalued, it has a 2% dividend yield, growth ahead, so nothing wrong. However, from an absolute perspective, you have to ask yourself, am I happy with a 2% dividend from my investments? Can I do better? For better, we have to look at Intel, for example. So we ha are living in an environment with shortages of chips, technology being more and more exuberant, and the dominant company there is trading at a price earnings ratio of 12, which is half of Deutsche Börse. The dividend yield is a little bit higher. They are investing all over the place. And the question is, okay, there is competition, but will this be worth more than 200 billion in the next 10 years. And am I happy with the dividend yield no matter what happens? If you look further into stocks, you can look at China Mobile, the 5G company there, and their business model, the price earnings ratio is just seven, the dividend yield is even 7%. Of course, this is because of 
China, the risks there. But you have to see, okay, how do Chinese risks and how does the 7% yield fit my portfolio? Then you are focused on absolute things and not focused on what the stock market thinks. Nobody knows what will happen with this stock, but if it goes down, the dividend yield will most likely go to 10, 11, 12%. And that's a margin of safety again. We'll do more valuation examples in part two. So be sure to subscribe and be notified so that you are notified when part two of the webinar comes out. And the key of absolute versus relative investing is focusing on owning a business. The key is that you be a business owner and think from a business owner perspective so that you see, okay, my returns from an investment will come from the business, not from the stock price going up or down. You look at the fundamentals of the business, how those fundamentals develop, and that's your investment return. And the first key principle when it comes to value investing is long-term investing. What does it mean long-term? We'll discuss hyperbolic discounting in the second part of the webinar, which is seeing or looking where the rest of the stock market doesn't look. The stock market is very myopic, like normal. It's human nature to be short-term, to think short-term, and everyone wants to buy stocks that go up. So we as value investors, 3 to 5% of the population, have an advantage if we look beyond where the stock market looks. As Warren Buffett says, cash flows from today till judgment day. That is what gives us an advantage because value investing advantage is looking at the cash flows from year two to year five, even year 10. The market is focused on the next quarter. Wall Street is focused on the next quarter. The longest term Wall Street analysts look at a year, maybe two years. But if you look beyond two years, you are have the core value investment advantage. And then you can position yourself, depending on the price, depending on the valuation, depending on the value on the business, then you can position yourself for stock market investing opportunities that are offered by the irrational stock market. If we go back to the NASDAQ market, so did the businesses that are included in the NASDAQ triple over the last five years? Did their wealth, did their business, did those earnings triple over the last five years? No. So businesses develop, most of those businesses don't even make money, but now the market is exuberant while just 10 years ago, it was very, very pessimistic. This was trading at 10% of the current level. Was the internet not about to take the world? What take over the world from here to here? What changed? Did we still use Google here? Did we still buy an Amazon here? Yes. But now the market is extremely exuberant while here it was offering extreme value because everyone was selling. Why were people selling? Because everyone was expecting the stock price to go down and no one was looking at the long-term development of those businesses and the growth there. Then exuberance came with money printing and there is nowhere to put our money. But that's again a different story. We as value investors look at the underlying business developments, avoid the exuberance times because we think also of the risks here and buy when there is value. And to buy when there is value, you have to eliminate the stock market's noise and focus on the fundamentals of the business, which is the core of value investing. I just took this snip from Bloomberg. What does it say? Everyone is so focused on the news. What do the news say? And we have now issues in Afghanistan, of course. We have the Fed. What will the Fed say? Will it increase interest rates? Will it say it will increase interest rates one day? And these are all irrelevant information. If we just look at business week from November 21, 2011, let's just look at the news back there. Italy labors pain. Occupy Wall Street was still a big topic back then. What's the impact of the European recession on investments, debtor fights to stay afloat? So a lot of issues that 
now seems such a long time ago. And most of the current news will also be forgotten pretty quickly. But it's very easy to get tempted when it comes to investing to fall into the trap of following stock market noise instead of focusing on the fundamentals of the business. And most of this news will be completely irrelevant already in a week. So we have to focus on the business and how to know, how to focus on the business and eliminate the noise out there. Well, there is one little trick. Let's say that you buy a stock that represents a business. You have to buy it and then expect the stock market to close for 10 years. If you can trick your mind to think like that, okay, if I buy it now and the stock market closes for 10 years, am I happy owning that? If you are, then you are a value investor. If you can't think in those concepts, I'm sorry for you, your long-term returns will likely be very, very low. Like JP Morgan shows here, the average return for an investor over the last 20 years has been just close to 3% while the market did much better and value investors did even better. Because the worst enemy, as Benjamin Graham says, of an investor is the investor himself. And if you are really investing, if you can buy something and be happy with the stock market closing for 10 years, if you forget about the following stock prices, then you, we are talking value investing. Going back to stocks, how does this work? Okay, I buy this now. I'm happy with the dividend. What's the likelihood that the business will fail, that summer will happen? You adjust your portfolio exposure for the risk of the business going south, going happening something there, and you enjoy the dividend, you reinvest the dividend, you look at the business growing over the decades, and that is what makes you an investor. I'm perfectly happy owning this in one of my portfolios for the next decade if the stock market would close there. But again, to emphasize this, just an Eurostat research that just came out, most people use the internet to read online news sites, especially in Finland, European Union 65%. But when it comes to education, just 26% use it for learning activities. Yes, we are entertained by the news, but this is detrimental when it comes to investing. Because anything can happen in 10 years, the news won't tell you before. You have to invest in value, invest in things that will be there in 10 years, no matter what. And Warren Buffett has a nice saying about that. Invest in businesses that have a moat. So strong businesses, strong brands, natural modes, natural advantages, low cost advantages, or improved technology, technology that is five, 10 times better than the rest of the competition. Good, no matter what, that is value investing. And if you can just find one, value investing is extremely boring. If you can just find one business every two years that has those characteristics over 20 years, you have an amazing portfolio with constantly growing dividends, which no matter what happens then with the market, you're happy owning. And that's what we value investors do, modern value investors, let's say. And how does this work from a practical perspective? How does this wealth accumulation work is what I want to show you now. If you start thinking in slow and steady over the years, 5, 10, 15 years ahead, then you can have a huge advantage over anything else. If we look to investor government, the US Securities and Exchange Commission, and we go to their financial tools and calculators, you have this great compound interest calculator that shows you what can happen with an investment. Let's say that we start with an invest initial investment of 100,000. We don't add anything monthly. You can play around with that. Let's say we do it over 20 years and we have an interest rate of 10% and a variance rate of 5%. So we'll have scenarios from 5, 10 and 15% returns. We calculate it and these are the returns. Starting with, from 100,000, if we get to 15% 15, over 20 years, we have 1.6 million. That's 16 times our investment. 
10% six times our investment and 5% 2.5 times our investment. What do I want to discuss with here? Everyone is looking for stocks that will double, triple, quadruple. No, value investors look for good long-term returns that will compound no matter what. If I can lower my risk by 2% and increase my returns by 2%, I already have a 4% advantage over the market. If I can lower by 4% the risk and increase the return by 4%, I have an 8% return advantage over the market, which usually gives between now 5% because of the high valuations and 10, 15%, depending on where we are. So if I can find businesses that will compound no matter what at 10, 15%, dividends of 7% plus growth ahead, that's a 10% investment. If I can find those and compound and then somewhere take advantage of the ups and downs of the market, if something becomes exuberant, sell, buy something else that will do good no matter what, then I can reach those 10, 12, 15% per year, some year less, some year better, but that really makes a huge difference over accumulating wealth and compounding over the long term. So to summarize value investing, you have to have a long-term investment perspective, a long-term investment view on things longer than the market, two to five years. You have to be patient. You have to wait for those developments. But if you watch those businesses and you see the businesses develop, then you know that sooner or later your reward will come too. The market is overlooking that which means you have a value investing advantage. It's boring, it's slow and steady, it's focusing on what can go wrong instead of what can go right, looking at the fundamentals of the business, buying those, owning a business. So it's uh, very, very boring. But as they say, if you're having fun when investing in the stock market, you are in a very, very dangerous place. And value investing is also roundabout. If a stock goes down, I'm happy because I can buy more for cheaper. Like Warren Buffett says, the stock market is the only place where when there is a sale, when stock prices go down, investors rush out of the store. Everywhere else, when there is a sale, everyone is rushing in. We value investors think opposite of the market. When there is a sale, we rush in, which allows us to buy cheaper things, better things for a lower price and to reach higher long-term returns. So I hope I have summarized a little bit what value investing is. I'm looking forward to the Q&A section now and I'll see you also in the second part of the value investing webinar where we'll do a valuation how to invest. I'll even share with you my intrinsic value template that we'll learn how to use and I'm sure it will help you with your value investment decisions. Thanks for watching, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.